Hi, I'm Stasi and I'm a fashion design student at British High School of Art and Design in Moscow. Since I don't really have much collection development footage ready, I thought today I'd show you 12 of my favourite British fashion designers. They are all London based and I deliberately chose the ones that are not as popular as say Matty Bovan, Simone Rochelle, Richard Quinn. And they are all ranging from knitwear, menswear, women's wear, even accessories and shoes. So let's get into it. First is a women's wear brand, it's called Chopova Lowena and it is founded by two women, Emma Chopova and Laura Lowena. They are both MA Central St. Martins graduates and they were finalists of this year's LVMH prize, so congrats, I'm very happy about that because I just recently discovered them, I think about six months ago, maybe eight months ago, and I was so in love with their work because it's very heavily focused on print, on textiles, they are using dead stock traditional Bulgarian weaving and they're focusing on pleating, which I am in love with this season specifically. Um, also their work is always very puffy, very colourful, playing around with large silhouettes on the top and I just love the abundance of clashing materials so they're using a lot of different carabines which are coming from Laura Lowena's background as a mountain climber and uh, the traditional Bulgarian weaving that they're using is coming from uh, Emma Tropova's background as a Bulgarian person so it's very interesting how they're all combining this all together and also one very interesting technique that they have adapted is traditional Turkish water marbling. Traditionally this technique is used for tiles and they have adapted it for jeans so it's very interesting how they are adapting different craft techniques into their work and adding some other cultures into the mix which is very beautiful. I moved a little closer to the source of natural sunlight, hopefully that will be better. So second brand, also women's wear, is Charlotte Knowles London. I am absolutely obsessed with her work right now, I just found her about six months ago again and she's one of the members of Fashion East at the moment. Fashion East, if you don't know, is a UK based like talent incubator for young designers and they are helping them establish their work, showcase it on their Fashion East fashion show and are helping them build their brand itself. So I feel like this is a very helpful initiative and I'm so happy that it exists because once you're subscribed to Fashion East Instagram you'll be finding young new talents quite easily and that's how I found her and multiple other people from this list as well. She is impeccable. Her work is a beautiful combination of something very sort of restricting and formalizing with soft elegance and female form. I'll be looking through her Instagram and commenting on everything but I am absolutely in love with how she's combining something very gentle, very easy with structured forms. It is impeccable. I love her work and her twist on corsetry, how she's playing with prints and clashing prints together. So one of my favorite looks is this one where she is uh, combining the same print but in different textures and different materials and in layers. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. It's a beautiful sexy elegant with nothing vulgar about it at all and I just love how body conscious the design is. I feel like this is impeccably beautiful. This would layer on top of different things. She has a lot of different pieces, tops, dresses, bottoms and they would all look amazing in anyone's wardrobe so check her out definitely. Third also women's wear brand is Caroline Levito. Hopefully I'm pronouncing this right but I'm probably butchering all the names right now. She's also a London based designer but she's from Brazil originally and she's focusing on embracing and even accentuating female forms rather than hiding them. She's a Royal College of Art graduate and is so beautifully represented how the female body is interacting with the material that she's using. She is quite often using organic shapes and silhouettes and combining metal detail work with uh, uh, jersey and elastic bands and the way she works the body is just impeccable. She is mostly working on the actual body rather than on the stand and even right now during quarantine she has been asking for just photos of women's bodies if they're interested to send them so you could send her your photos and she would be redrawing on top of those like she is for example in here. I absolutely love the way she is showing the body and again I absolutely don't think it's vulgar. I feel like it's embracing the body in such a beautiful way and as if she's working with a sculpture rather than actual clothing or anything else. So I think this is a beautiful combination of a designer's hand with the female body. I also think that through her work, if you were to own one of the pieces, you would feel way more confident and it is embracing the confidence of the female body. She, Because she's originally from Brazil and the Brazilian beauty standards, as I read in her own words, an article from ID Magazine, are quite Kim Kardashian-like. So tiny waist, large hips, and plastic surgery is quite common there. The designer herself, she's feeling quite the opposite of that. She's feeling like helping women embrace their body, love their body, and I feel like through her work, it is so evident and it's a very beautiful way of uh, representing the message. And that's why I feel fashion is so powerful because you can embed any idea, any message into your work. And if it is represented truly through your passion, through your heart, I feel like everyone is gonna get it and it is gonna help people feel empowered. So I feel like she's doing a great job at that. Next up is Nancy Dojoka or 
Doyaka, I don't know. Sometimes I just feel my Slonin kicking in and I start reading like no English speaker, whatever. So let's say it's Nancy Dojaka. She is a MA CSM graduate from 2019 and she's also represented by Fashion East. And when I look through her work, the first word that comes to mind is gentle because the fabrics and the way she's manipulating them are so soft and light and airy, I would say. It's very beautiful, very layered sometimes and body conscious as well, like the previous brands were. It's quite revealing, but in a very innocent way, I would say. So if the previous works I said were not um, sexualized and not too revealing, I don't think this one either is sexualized. It feels so gentle because the fabric that she's using is transparent, I don't know what it is, organza maybe, um, and it is manipulated on the body in a way that is complementing the female figure, but it is um, innovative in my opinion and sometimes sort of like collage or uh, patchworky in a stretched out way and it is drawing your eye around across the body. You're not focusing on a specific area which typically would be if the female body was objectified focused on breasts or maybe lower part of the belly. You are traveling and your eye is sort of like reading a story when you look at her work because the way her fabric is pulled to a specific area and then the folds are drooping to the other side it feels very dynamic and it's extremely beautiful. You might say that they are sexy because of the amount of skin that is on display but to me the sexiness is counterbalanced by the gathering and the layered multi-layered semi-transparent monochrome fabrics which ring gentle and soft rather than rough and exposed. I feel like it's a very mature cuteness and mature state of soft and gentle forms around the body so I would absolutely love to invest in some of her pieces. Now we're on to knitwear, so the next couple of brands are going to be knitwear related. The first one is Kepler or Kepler. It's a London-based brand making meaningful and mindful knitwear. It was founded by two CSM graduates, Alexandra and Jamie, whose surnames I'm not even going to try to butcher, and they are designing knitwear with a hands-on approach. Their work is very sculptural, some of the dresses are sculptural and engineered even, sheer tops and intricate cutouts. They are using only natural fibres, creating structures within the knit, which is quite interesting, quite difficult to make. They are creating pleating with the knitwear which is an uncharted territory for me, I've never heard of it. And they are also implementing print into their knitwear, which is quite interesting in this top, for example, the Mona Lisa top. It's playful and sophisticated, and in my opinion, this combination is quite beautiful, especially with knitwear, because my association with knitwear typically is something very traditional, like a, I don't know, a uh, fisherman sweater with cable knitting or something and I absolutely love the twist on knitwear and I feel like it's very difficult to do because the fabric essentially is quite soft and gentle usually and engineering it I feel like is a very interesting approach to this traditional technique. Obviously this brand is focusing heavily on actual textile and both of the girls, if I'm not mistaken, were studying a textile design course on, in CSM so I absolutely can see that in their work and it's exceptional so definitely check them out. Number six is Katharina Dubik. She's a Royal College of Art graduate in knitwear and I absolutely love her work because it's so beautiful how she contrasts different textures. Something very strong, plaster-like almost. She is contrasting with very gentle and very light, almost transparent and airy knitwear. The combination of the two textures is extremely beautiful. I love how she is implementing some sheer paneling into something opaque and uh, the color palette especially with this combination of textures is extremely beautiful. So she's using something very pastel, very soft, very gentle in contrast with uh, bright red or black or dark dark brown which again it's very beautiful and body conscious and the way it is manipulating around the body with those plaster I can't even say if it's plaster I don't think so they look like they're sort of silicone made but I don't think that's the case because they are holding the shape pretty beautifully maybe that is like a soaked fabric in silicone or something but it's absolutely amazing it is quite beautiful especially her photo shoots as well because they are next to a plastic cast next to a sculpture which is very appropriate for the photo shoot in my opinion and especially the pieces I feel like they're so simple sometimes and so the cut can be quite simple but the way it is knit and engineered around the body is just impeccable because I'm working on my degree collection I'm also looking into the female body and the scans of the body I absolutely don't mind how it is styled on a couple of her photos because the female body is extremely beautiful and I feel like it is working so well with her pieces, especially with the contrasting textures and opacity levels and materials. It's just gorgeous. Our last knitwear designer for today is Calm Bryce Nian. Uh, probably butchered the pronunciation, but I absolutely love the brand because it's so soft and gentle. But what drew my eye specifically was the fact that it is quite genderless, even in the photo shoots that he does for the brand. I feel like this is the trajectory fashion design is sort of moving into, into erasing gender boundaries, into being very 
very inclusive and for everyone to wear whatever they want and I feel like it's not so uncommon for a guy to wear something from women's wear or for a woman to wear something from men's wear and I feel like his brand is quite representative of the current time. The way he is manipulating the body, not just in the traditional sort of female body form but it is engaging with the male body as well. The textiles are just so amazing. He has actually collaborated with Charlotte Knowles and has made a very body conscious top for one of her collections. I absolutely love the work because the fabrics that he's creating are so transparent and especially on a male body it looks a little bit more interesting because transparent textiles are usually not very welcome in traditional menswear because they are seen as a little bit too girly, too feminine, too gentle and I absolutely love this contrast of traditionally seen as a very like a strong male body with something very gentle and very soft but the fabric that I'm mostly drawn to is this beautiful top with as if the pieces of fabric were worn down so some of the areas are again less opaque than the others and it's engaging with the arms and with the body and it's showing it in a very beautiful way which is not so traditional I love how you can see this little nip slip for a guy on this top and I feel like it's extremely beautiful and always sort of organically I'm moving into men and the first one in that category is Steph Funko he is not creating your typical traditional menswear. He's doing menswear with a twist and the first thing that drew me into his collections was its shirt which I saw which has a trompe l'oeil effect and trompe l'oeil is an art technique that is utilizing realistic imagery to create optical illusion sort of like eye trickery and I absolutely love it because something that appears like a top or a shirt or a corset is absolutely not that and I love how it's contrasting uh, your thoughts and making you think twice and rethink what you just saw and I feel like this is very beautiful because it's interactive so his work is also very beautiful not in just that regard of using to employ but also the way he's treating his work and his textile manipulations as well besides the print a knitted sweater for example even though he's not a knitwear designer he's also utilizing it playing around with it so it's very interesting how he has created a sweater which is a cable knit but it also has some gashes and slashes which is sort of playing around with how usually knitted sweaters quite often have this diamond pattern knitted into them which is quite amazing I feel like I absolutely love with things that do not look what they are supposed to look like and I feel like this is very beautiful he's also introducing a lot of uh, technological development into the textiles into the way he's working I am not exactly sure what this technique is but he's sort of burning some specific uh, prints of lace which I believe were scanned and distorted on a scanner before he created the print but it's very interesting how technological development implemented into fashion design can result in something very beautiful and unexpected and never seen before so I highly suggest you check him out he is also represented by Fashion East I think last year but don't quote me that it might be this year I love how he's subverting classics, introducing new technologies in textiles and I feel like he is moving fashion forward. Next up is Richard Malone. He is also a CSM graduate who also won a Walmart prize recently. He's focused on sustainable sourcing, fair trade labour, craft and recycling which I appreciate deeply because that is super important in the 21st century in the fashion world in general. He is recycling fishing net, recycling acrylics, using bright colourful pieces in his collection and layering colourful pieces. He is creating beautiful overcoats from recycled leather and from different fabrics and the way he's manipulating gathering is also very beautiful to me and I wanted to just know for someone who is interested in creative fashion but it doesn't really know how to play around with it if you see some pieces in the wrong way and they might look a little bit too extra just try to break them down into layers and what they are actually consisting of because some of the pieces in collections in general are quite layered and quite out there and extra but if you break them down take a very beautiful let's say sculptural sweater and if you look in this middle look it's essentially one sweater with a different sweater over top if I'm not mistaken and then a pair of trousers with either a skirt attached to them or separately but if you take that top sweater for example if you put wear it with let's say black turtle like underneath or with nothing underneath and then a pair of jeans it's quite a simple look with a beautiful show-stopping sweater on the top so if you break them down if you choose pieces that you like I feel like it's going to be beautiful and I feel like his collection and his work in general is very great at that and I absolutely love his ginormous gathered jersey if I'm not mistaken of silk it was just presented on the 14th of February and I love how the pieces are performing obviously that is not your typical I'm gonna go to grocery store jacket but it looks very amazing and beautiful and sculptural and it gives so much inspiration for the future work so sometimes when you see collections have something very extra which you won't even dare to imagine on, on the street uh, it's for the inspiration or for structure or for performance wear or but it always finds a way to get into people's hands and be used later on and especially 
especially because he's trying his best to work with sustainable practices, I find it very inspirational. And the next category is footwear, and the first person I want to show you is Helen Kirkum or Helen Kirkum Studios on Instagram. I just found about her maybe two weeks ago when our tutor sent us a link to a couple of cool live streams. She's a Royal College of Art graduate, also working in London as all of the designers I just mentioned. She describes herself as a sneaker collagist. She's repurposing all sneakers into works of art, and she has had a chance to work with multiple different brands such as Reebok, Adidas. She has collaborated with Adidas, uh, working alongside with Alexander Wang, and she has worked with the graduating students for their collections, which is really cool. I also in her live stream, I found out that sometimes when she's creating her sneakers, her pair does not look identical, which I feel like just gives them even more character, which is really cool. And everyone is sort of focusing on being unique and not trying to fit in with the masses. And with her approach, with her sustainable approach and her, her not mass producing the pieces, it's very evident that the pieces are going to be very unique and very beautiful. I absolutely love her recent collaboration project with Matthew Needham where she created multiple shoes also out of recycled footwear but the way that she has constructed those separate toe shoes in construction with the traditional elements of typical sneakers with that very recognisable sole with the recognisable little lip that comes on the back I feel like it is great and she's doing her part in the climate conscious design aiming to educate others to do the same and I feel like she's succeeding in that 100% because the outcomes are very beautiful, very unique, very interesting. Even on quarantine she has done a couple of live streams on Instagram because because she's repurposing sneakers she doesn't really have endless amount of material to work with so she has created this interesting fun idea for visualizing and conceptualizing her ideas in 3d our second shoe designer for today is Tabitha Ringwood she's creating very interesting bespoke heels and I feel like it's very cool how she is also focusing on sustainability in that sense that she's only creating bespoke made-to-order pieces so there's not going to be a ton of waste left over from them they're gonna fit you perfectly and there's not going to be any idea for you to throw them out of something because they're especially very well crafted. I feel like the shapes of the heels are very unique. Those are like sexy shoes and dangerous looking and I love how they look very sleek and very very professional and she has had a lot of experience working in the field of footwear before so I'm pretty sure that they're going to be quite comfortable and I love how the leather is working with the body and how she is making an effort to make them consciously minimal waste. And the last brand for today is an accessories brand called Scotria. They are a London-based modern accessories brand focusing on modular design and reinterpretation of international craftsmanship. They are taking inspiration from interior design and the world of art, which results in a very beautiful, colourful collection. They strive for sustainable materials and sustainable production practices as well. Because they're using recycled plexiglass and the design is modular, they are able to reuse their stock. So once they change the collection, they are able to reuse the same pieces that they have left over. So this way, they're not staying like seasonal. So this is one collection, you can't really repurpose it. Those plexiglass pieces can be repurposed for further collections and they can change colorways and still reuse the pieces that were not sold out, which is amazing in my opinion. I love the collections, I absolutely love the spiral, which is very three-dimensional, it gives a character, it's very playful. You can also construct your own bag. I also love how customizable they are. They have actually vegan options as well, so if you are looking for something like this in a unique, very interesting style, you can have something in here as well. So this is it for today. I really hope you enjoyed the design as I showed you. I'm gonna leave the links to them down below to their Instagram so that you can go and check them out, scroll them, subscribe to them, so that you could support them as much as you can. I really hope that the quarantine is going to end soon and all of the designers are still going to be able to stay afloat to upkeep their business because the times are now so difficult. It will be very sad for me to see anyone leave, especially because fashion design is so difficult and the amount of work that goes into it is just so crazy and it's sometimes unbelievable. So I really hope that they're going to stay afloat because they work so hard. I'm absolutely 100% sure. I really hope that you can support them and subscribe to me as well if you want to see the design development journey of my degree collection and if you want to see how that quarantine thing plays out on a degree student because I'm about to graduate in this digital world, have a digital submission on June 1st and I have absolutely no idea if we're going to have a runway show, if we're going to have a little exhibition that we usually have. So yeah, if you want to see how that all plays out, subscribe to me as well. Bye, thank you for watching.